Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is you're listening to me here right now. Welcome back to the Moor Army Podcast for yet another episode. I can't believe it's Tuesday once again. Last time I spoke to you was last Thursday. The weekend has just been by so quick. And we're back here once again on a Tuesday morning recording the podcast for you guys once again. Hope you're all doing well as always out there guys. Um, hope you all had a great weekend. I had a pretty good weekend, actually, so it did. Pretty good weekend, actually. Um, <laughs> great weekend of football. Great weekend with friends. Had a great weekend, for once. <laughs> but anyway, yes, hello. <laughs> Plenty to talk about today. Um, I just want to say thank you guys for um, all the streams and downloads on Spotify and Apple Music for last Thursday's podcast. Thank you so much for that. I do appreciate it. Um and also, I put out a wee thing last night on social media, asking you guys for some questions for today. Obviously, I do get questions as normal, but I put a wee thing out last night asking for more questions, and you guys responded really, really well. So thank you very, very much for that. I was just checking the numbers on the streams uh, on last Thursday, or streams and downloads on Spotify and Apple Music, and also the lessons on TuneIn Radio as well. So guys, thank you very much for that. I do appreciate all your your uh, time listening to me rant and rave here on the Moor Army podcast. Uh, if you haven't listened to the episode from last Thursday, go back and check it out. Um, it was entitled, Are the Simpsons Going Woke? And a lot of you have got back to me about that and said that you saw that clip online where uh, they're, they're, they're everybody's saying now that the, um, the, the Simpsons are going on, on the direction of being woke, along with everything else. This is a fucking nightmare. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into some of the stuff today here on the podcast um, Before going go into any more in today's show Just do the usual, as I always like to do here at the very start of each episode If you're new to the podcast, hello, welcome to the, the Moor Army podcast for the first time If you're a regular listener, obviously you know how to do all the usual stuff um, If you'd like to get in touch with us here on the podcast, you can do it by the following methods Which is the email, first of all, Podcast at yahoo.com also, you can contact us on social media, which is the Facebook page, first of all, Moor Army YouTube channel on Facebook. Please, guys, drop a like on the page. I would appreciate it. You can watch all the links for all the vlogs, podcasts, and more. Also on Instagram, official, my, my own personal Instagram, which is official, Matthew Moore on Instagram. Thank you very much for that. If you want to check out the Moor Army YouTube channel, you can. We can see all our vlogs and stuff over the last nearly eight years. Uh, subscribe to that channel guys would appreciate it uh, as well if you want to con well not on twitter or x by the way in case you're wondering i'm not on that platform i'm on that platform now for nearly two years because it's a platform that i think is toxic but i don't go anywhere near it so i'm not on there guys in case you're wondering um if you want to check out the website for the mirror army which we have put up new items onto the website last night for christmas um, which we're going to be dropping this afternoon on social media. We have got new Christmas jumpers. We have new Moor Army Christmas hoodies. I think, as far as I know, we're having t-shirts as well. And uh, some Christmas bags as well for your Christmas shopping. Really good, actually really good Christmas bags. Of them really sort of like good heavy material ones. We're going to be grabbing some of them for Christmas as well. So yes, they have been added to the website and they're going to be going live today. That's the Moor Army Christmas stuff. So we've got Christmas jumpers, Christmas hoodies to keep you nice and warm. They're actually really fleecy on the inside because I got Brooke a Moor Army podcast hoodie recently. And uh, you can see photographs of that on my social media. Actually, you can check it out. Um, she loves her hoodie. It's so fleecy on the inside. So yes, guys, all that are... All our social media posts, the Moor Army website, which is all your busy gear, Moor Army hub, moorarmy.co.uk. That's moorarmy.co.uk. That's for all your merchandise and much, much more. Also, want to give a shout out to our friends of the podcast, the Food Guru and I. You want to find it hanging here in Northern Ireland in relation to all your great food reviews for uh, restaurants, bars, local food establishments. To get all your great food for your household and more. It's Food Guru and I on TikTok. You can go and check them out. Um, some really good food reviews on there as well. Anyway, guys, what a weekend it's been. I got some really cool uh, interesting stories I want to talk about today on the podcast, but before we go into that there, 
let's just tell you what I've been up to since the last time I spoke to you. Um, it's been a pretty busy, busy weekend. Um, you know, <laughs> Thursday night went very well. I actually had an old friend around on Thursday night. I got a bit of a surprise on Thursday, guys. As you all know, if you're regular listening to the podcast, you know, or a regular viewer to my YouTube channel, on Thursday nights after I record the podcast and stuff and get finished up for the day and work and whatever, I'd always like to sit down with my bra and have a few beers and chill out and whatnot. You all know the story. But this past Thursday, I got, oh, got a text. Not long after I recorded the podcast from an old friend of mine, no, a guy who used to wrestle for my wrestling company, a guy I've known for quite a long time, guy who would, who's one of the most kindest, nicest guys you'd ever meet in your life. The guy would literally give you the shirt off his back and the last five pound out of his pocket. The guy's just a an absolute gentleman. Uh, Graham, can't send me a wee text saying, oh, you and your brother having the beer tonight? Could I join you? And they were like, hell yeah, come on, let's go. So around he came. Now he didn't stay too long. Um, and he left and he went home early-ish. Um, but it was good to see him. He came around, he had a beer, sat and caught up, had a chat. Uh, dude's going through a bit of hard time at the minute. Um, going through a bit of a marriage breakup and stuff at the minute, which kind of sucks. Um, I will say I've been there myself, it's not good. Um, it's kind of going through the same sort of situation I went through. But I want to obviously <laughs> talk more about obviously his private life, but just wanted to let, um, say, you know, that I'm thinking about him every day and I told him that, you know, I'm always here if he needs anybody to talk to or whatever, so... He's a good dude and he deserves to be happy because he's always been a good lad for me, especially the days when I used to run, run a wrestling company here in Northern Ireland. He was always one of the guys who you could depend on, you know, help build a ring, help set up an arena, you know, help stand in the street back in the day before Facebook and all came around, handing out flyers and putting up posters and, you know, just being an overall good dude. He would bust his balls for you and he was a good guy to be around. Um, he was actually in one of my vlogs one time. I actually vlogged at his wedding. One of his uh, his wedding days on my YouTube channel. Um, parts of it. It's called Graham and Chloe's Wedding Day. It's on my YouTube channel. I want to go check it out. So it's a good dude. And it was great to see him on Thursday night. We had a few beers. Tony and I caught up. Well, he only had one or two. Um, then he left. And then we obviously had a good catch up and stuff. And we had a good, good time. And we had a good laugh. And, you know, it was good to catch up. It's always good to catch up with an old friend whenever you haven't seen anybody for a long time, guys. It always is, when you, have, you know, especially when someone's going through a bad time and you always know, you know, again, I've, I've said this many times in this podcast, I kind of keep my circle very small nowadays, even though I'm in the public eye all the time with, with YouTube and football and, you know, the podcast and things like that, you know, but I tend to keep my circle very small away from from, from all the, 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 the public life. And with Graham... You know, he's the same, and he's such a nice guy, and it was great to see because obviously, you know, he contacted me a lot of weeks ago and let me know that you know, he's going through a bit of hard times at the moment, so myself and Tony went and visited him and stuff to see if he was okay, and we always told him our door was always open, and lo and behold, he contacted me last week, and we had a great chat, we had a great catch-up, and uh, yeah, it was good to see him, so hopefully I get to see him more often in the future, fingers crossed. But uh, no, that was good. Thursday night was a good laugh. We had a good bit of bit of crack and banter, and I sat down for half an hour, forty minutes during during my night, and uh, spent a bit of time answering some of your emails and whatnot. So uh, yeah, it was good. Um, it was good catching up with him. So it was, and uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'll get to see him again very very soon. So Thursday night was good fun. It was exactly what I needed after a really long week. So it was. But the weekend itself, wow, guys, I shared this on my story on Instagram. Now, anybody there who watches football, no one's a lot of people who listen to this podcast. I want to talk about football for about two minutes, so bear with me. (laughs) One of the most interesting games I've ever been attended in the Irish League, I've worked in the Irish League for 13 years. Lewis and I were football on Saturday. The Welders were taking on Anna in Belfast, which... It'll be a pretty difficult uh, situation. Also, guys, it was Remembrance Weekend as well for all the, the those who had fallen throughout the conflict of the war and stuff. Um, the welders put on a fantastic uh, memorial thing, as they always do every single year. They had a, a bugle player. They had a guy 
we had mil- ex-military guys who served. Um, we had a thing in the, on the, in the halfway line where we had a guy playing a bugle. We had flags. We had the whole nine yards, a whole complete memorial service, which was just a- excellent. Um, go on the Welders TV YouTube channel, guys. You can watch that part of it, or you can watch the highlights of the game as well, which is separate. Excellent uh, representation of Remembrance Day for from the Welders as always. They always do every single year, which is just amazing. Um. But yeah, the game itself, wow, holy shit, what a game. We had a player sent off at the start of the second half. It was nil-nil. They actually battered us for the majority of the game. Um, and I thought they were maybe going to get one or two goals, and I thought it was going to be one of those afternoons again where we were going to get beat again. And they, we got a man sent off, and I thought, ha, oh, here we go. They're going to run up now and score two or three goals. We're going to be fucking hammered, and it's going to be one of those afternoons again, which is going to ruin our weekend. And then it got even worse. We'd used all our substitutes as well. And what happened? Our left back went down and wrecked his knee. He ended up being carried off on a stretcher. I think it's an ACL uh, damage to his knee. As far as I know, I'll find out more probably later on today. So we were down to nine men. And it was like, oh, here we go. They're going to run up and score. Nine times out of ten when you're down to nine men, the other team takes advantage of it. Like what happened to Tottenham Hotspur. Their, their weekend there against Chelsea. I thought, here we go, we're going to get battered. Got to go home tonight and make up a match report. It's going to say, like, well, there's no, I don't know, three or four or whatever. Holy shit, guys, what happened was incredible. And if you're not a football fan, you got to watch this, this video on YouTube. Welders TV, go and check it out, guys, seriously. We scored on the 87th minute from our big defender, big Kyle. What a header, and he... His, the, the video of him celebrating the goal is going all around Northern Ireland at the minute. Pretty viral, actually. Uh, he started doing the gritty celebration because we scored so late on with nine men. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on here? Nine men and we scored. And the celebration's obviously going all over the place. I shared uh, on my story on Instagram and stuff like that. But then, it, guys, it even got from better to worse. In the 93rd minute, we fucking scored again. Couldn't believe it. Young fella called Ternan. Young forward who's only about 19, 20 years of age broke away and scored and the reaction from the supporters and the bench and everybody around Northern Ireland. Our social media has been going crazy the last few days in relation to the, 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 this 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 remarkable win. We won 2-0 with nine men. Couldn't fucking believe it. Even Lewis at the side of the pitch was like, what the hell's going on? He was taking pictures and everything else. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. But, yes, that was an exciting night. We were now, we were supposed to go to the ice hockey afterwards, but we didn't. We came home, sold our tickets on, went home. And it was just one of those Saturday nights where I came home and I had to get everything out as quick as possible because the buzz on social media the last few days here in Northern Ireland about the football has been incredible. We're also at a game on Saturday morning too, which is uh, the 21s were playing banger. So that was a old ground two weeks in a row. And then on Sunday, Sunday was a, Sunday was an even better night. I ended up going out um, with a friend. We went out, had some dinner and had a catch up. And, and then we went for a coffee afterwards, went for a nice wee drive out in the car, sat down at the beach, talked shite, had a good laugh, had a really good night. And yeah, guys, to be quite honest with you, it's probably one of the better weekends I've had in as many months, just having good people around me and having a good time with football and spending time with Lewis, most importantly as well. It's just been an overall great weekend and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a really, really good weekend and also got some really good interaction from you guys on social media as well. I replied to some of you guys on Instagram the other day and some of you were coming back with lovely comments. Thanking me for replying. I sent a load of your emails back to you as well, as I promised. Um, and I was also, guys, last Thursday, not the, the Thursday, there, the Thursday before, we were in Blackpool Lewis night on the podcast. Uh, that, that listener, obviously, her wee grandson, um, the shirt. We promised we were going to give him away a shirt for free. Uh, we were speaking to her again, and we have, the shirt actually arrived, was it yesterday? No, the shirt arrived on Saturday morning. Um, so we've it all signed, packed up, and ready to rock and roll off to that lovely listener of the Murami podcast. So there you go. Um, I've had a couple of these coming in saying, nah, you're not going to give away free stuff. No, well, we'll have 
and we hope to uh, hope that her grandson loves that at uh, t shirt that we uh, are sending off to them all signed by uh, myself, Burger Lewis, etc. So it's all on its way. So we are so all good nude. But guys, it's been a great weekend. I've had a really good weekend, and to be honest with you. I'm hoping for an even better weekend this weekend. But then the weekend after that's Brooke's 18th birthday. So, oh, that's going to be a fun one. That's got two weeks time. Well, a week this Saturday. Brooke turns 18. And it's going to be one of those emotional weekends for me, guys. Because Brooke's birthday is um, on the 25th of November. Then the next day is the seven-year anniversary of the passing of my best friend. So it's going to be an emotional weekend, happy weekend, but a very emotional weekend for me, um, because obviously I'm, cel- I'm celebrating Brooke's birthday on the Saturday, and then on the Sunday, which is uh, the anniversary of my friend passing away. He passed away in 2016, which will be seven years this year. I can't believe he's been gone for seven years. Um, so we obviously going to his graveside on sun on the Sunday. Afterwards, um, to uh, pay my respects to him, he's missed every day, so he is. So, yeah, it's gonna be. It's one of those ones where uh, I'm happy, obviously, for Brooke because she's eighteen now and she's a grown woman and she's getting into that big bad world now on her own. And but I'm also very sad because obviously my friend's no longer here anymore. And I wish he was here because if he was here today, he'd be telling me like, Matthew, for fuck's sake, like son, you have an eighteen year old daughter now. How does that make you feel? I remember whenever we turned 18, jeez, long time ago, so it is, but here, there's always the good memories of it, and I always try and remember the good times, as I was talking to a sister there not that long ago as well, and I was saying to her, you know, fuck, we had so many good times, me and him, back in the day, oh, talk about it all day, the things we used to get up to, nothing bad, of course, like, but uh, yeah, we had so many good times, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a, a roller coaster of emotions weekend. So what is? But my baby girl turns eighteen this year. It's uh it's going to be uh, <laughs> it's going to be a happy weekend, but also a very sad weekend because um, do you know something? I was actually thinking there yesterday, which was the thirteenth of November, was the day she was actually supposed to be born. Yesterday was actually her due date day, the thirteenth of November two thousand five, but then she decided that she wasn't going to come out, and she came a week later. Or just over a week later, maybe twelve days later, or not even twelve days, seven days later, something like that. I, I, something like that. So there you go, crazy times, eh? Kids grow up too bloody quick. But anyway, yes, <laughs> I could sit here all day and get all emotional about it, but I'm not going to. So I'm not because at the end of the day, if I do, then obviously I'll get a little bit too emotional. <laughs> Right, what have I got for you today on the podcast? My goodness me, I've got so many stories for you today. I've lost count. Yes, finally, the police are now finally starting to grow balls and starting to lift and arrest these morons, these oil protesters. Thank God for that. Uh, an ex-employee of Obama, uh, your man used to be the president of America, has slid it. Sleepy Joe Biden is being too old, which Joe Biden responds to, which is great. Thank God. Guys... <laughs> The Simpsons, I was talking about The Simpsons last week being woke. Uh, we've got a, a story breaking this morning. And the National Trust, you all know who the National Trust are, have uh, been now being accused of being too woke after releasing a calendar but, but not even announcing Christmas or Easter on it, saying it doesn't exist, more or less. Guys, here in the UK, we've had Storm Debbie hitting our shores over the last few days. It's been absolutely bonkers. We'll talk about that on the podcast too as well. But they talk about the other day about Prince uh, Harry. I won't even call him a prince anymore. Uh, not being to attend his dad's birthday or not being welcome to attend his dad's birthday. We've got more on that story, which we talked about the other day. And also the return of former Prime Minister David Cameron uh, to the Cabinet after seven years. He was no fucking moron, so he was back in the day. But apparently he's back in business again. Along with the Tory party. Also, we've got some of your questions to answer to as well on the podcast here today. Also, sorry, one final thing. There's another uh, name floating around. You're going to be interested in this one. A name floating around. Obviously, everybody wants to know who's going to be the next James Bond. The next 007 to replace Daniel Craig. 
You won't believe who's been now rumoured to be going for this here, guys. You won't believe this name. It's unbelievable. I'm going to talk about that on the podcast as well. And also, I've got some of your questions to answer to as well. Right, let's get into some of it. <sighs> Sleepy Joe Biden. I'll start with him today because uh, I'd, I'd like to sort of get through that as quick as I can with him because he puts me to sleep. <laughs> uh, Joe Biden is raging at one of uh, Obama's first, or some one of his actual ex-employees, one of his basically right-hand men, has accused Joe Biden of being too old. Yes. Uh, he actually called him a prick as well after suggesting that the president was too old. guy called David, David Axelrod highlights uh, uh, publicly as well recently that Joe Biden is too old to rerun for a re-election as pre- uh, president of the United States. And Joe Biden's response has been funny. I'm surprised he didn't like sit there and stare at him and go, what, who, who? What day is it today? Oh, false. <laughs> false sleep, yeah. Guys, we all know Joe Biden's unfit for office. We all know Joe Biden's too old. We've seen the stories. We've seen the videos over the last couple of years. We've talked about it on the Mirror Army podcast for the last year or so. The guy's too old. He's too... The guy is not on our planet. All these signs you see, like Biden for president, should be taken out of the POA, and it should just be Biden for resident, as in care home resident. Um, but this guy, David Axelrod, who used to work for the ex... Uh, Barack Obama the ex-president of America, has come out publicly and said that Joe Biden should basically go away and go into a car home and take his wee insure and get his pad changed and, you know, basically sit in the car home and have his wee blanket wrap around him and watch episodes of Home Improvement or watch them uh, BBC woke programmes on the, you know, they used to watch in the car homes back in the day. Yeah, so, and I, I, I would agree with him because Joe Biden is too old. He's too old and he's done and I personally think that you know, he should be he should be gone. It's as simple as that. Everybody knows that. You know, he, he's just too old. He keeps falling over. He hasn't got a clue what he's talking about. He's a bit creepy as well. But I don't know. It, it's it's insane. It's absolutely insane. And the man's right. He should be retired. He's done. He's old. You know, the guy's a fucking. He's insane. And it's very it's it's hard to watch. It's really hard to watch when you see him on the TV now. You, know, you expect him to fall over or stumble his words or... <sighs> it's a nightmare. But good on that guy for coming out and finally somebody come out with a bit of a name on them and saying, look, he needs to go. He's too old. He's done. He should have never been fucking elected as president. We all know that from the start. Anyway, moving on. Guys, the National Trust are in the news today. And... We all know who the National Trust are. We all know that here in the UK. If you don't know who the National Trust is, look it up. But then I... Uh, <laughs> I saw this this morning. I couldn't believe it. Guys, what is with this... F- I keep talking about this all the time. This world is getting to the point now where you can't even blink the wrong way. You're being accused of fucking everything. Now the National Trust have come out and they're getting slated for this today and obviously in the, ma- in the mainstream media. They've released a controversial calendar that leaves off the Christian holidays of Christmas and Easter. Doesn't even acknowledge it on the calendar. So in, in the eyes of the woke dopes, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, they've released a charity calendar that excludes Easter and Christmas. Members of the European largest conservative charity were in disbelief over this calendar which failed to include Christmas holidays, but appeared to feature other religion festivals like Gay Pride. What the fuck? Uh, All these different um, holidays, but not Christmas or Easter. Also, uh, the Islamic holidays as well, and other religions bar Christmas or Easter. The National Fucking Trust of all people. Like, seriously, they are getting absolutely slated for this. Um, it also says, one of the concerns raised, including the increased focus, is focused on the slavery links of its historic properties. Oh, it says, a spokesperson for the Trust has said, Christmas and Easter remain special dates in its diary. However, they added that the inclusivity calendar was designed to help bring attention to a number of events Offered at its uh, facilities and attractions. 
Uh, Christmas and Easter is like a massive thing at the National Trust. All the trust, like theme park or the parks and stuff. You know, I know a person who has passes for the National Trust that go into all their like th- their parks and stuff over here, which do Christmas themes and Easter themes for children and all in that period of time throughout the year. Like, what the fuck are these morons doing? Like, and they're they're promoting Islamic holidays. Not that I have anything to do with religion, but the National Trust is. I don't fucking know that the people here are now. For what I've been reading this morning, I was reading more about this last night and this morning. The multiple news sources are reporting this, and there's a lot of people, especially I had to be browsing around online about it this morning too as well. And people are like scratching their head and going, "Christmas and Easter is not even included." Like National Trust, like parks you go to to visit with your family, and you know they have like lakes and and forest areas. And I was at one there last summer, and you know we were there, and there was a whole big forest area, and there was like. I just, it was hard to explain, but they had this lovely theme for the summer, and then in the, at Christmas time they do things for kids, like they bring in reindeers and Santa and all these different things for the National Trust, and Easter as well with Easter eggs and Easter bunnies and all for kids, and it's not even included in their calendars because they're completely ignoring it. What a load of bullshit! What a load of bullshit! As I always say, what everything's going woke. Everything is going woke. This is the way I'm looking at it. Everything is just getting to the point now. We talked about it in the Simpsons episode last Friday on the podcast, or last Thursday on the podcast, we talked about it. Saying Homer Simpson turned around to his, his wife and goes, we're not going to strangle Bart now anymore. But that's an iconic part of the show. And obviously we don't encourage any type of child abuse or anything like that there. But it's part of the cartoon. Oh, we don't do that no more because of the way the world is now today, Mar- Marge. We can't do that no more. So we're getting to the point now where we're cancelling kids' cartoons and we're cancelling everything. Me and Tony were talking about this on Thursday night. I said to Tony, you know, I think they all just sat at home during fucking lockdown and made up all these different stupid bullshit stories and, you know, and everything's just come out, all these stupid things you can't say and do anymore and you're all these different genders now and, you know, like, fuck me, like, man. You know, I get asked all the time, you know, in fact, I was actually asked there last weekend and football was talking to me man about all that because he mentioned my podcast, he heard about it. It's got football, and he says to me, you know, I heard your Simpsons episode, you were talking about the Simpsons going woke and all your different things you were talking about. You know, what do you think about this whole gender thing? I mean, he asked me, many genders do you think are as nice as two? And he says, well, what about these people who turn around and say, oh, I think there's like so many different... I'll just turn and say to them, why do you believe what you want to believe? I don't mind. You say what you have to say. You believe what you want to believe. Doesn't mean I have to believe in it. I don't, you know, I don't believe in what you believe. I believe in what I believe, and if you, it doesn't give you the right to turn around and try and get me cancelled or slip me or whatever it is online because I don't believe in what you believe. No, I'm sorry. If you go online and start slating me and disgracing me because I don't believe in what you believe, then that's obviously harassment towards me, and definition of the character. But then if I come back at you with that, then they start crying and boohooing like the little bitches and crying. Go, oh, you hurt my feelings. So yeah. Everything's just going woke now. It's crazy. They're, they're just this small minority of people in the UK just love to try and change everything as it suits their ways. Well, I know, I'm sorry, but I'm a realist and I live in a real world. I don't listen to that crap. So I wonder how many calendars they're going to sell in the National Trust because there's no Christmas and Easter in it. Hmm, have they keep a wee eye on that and see. Anyway, moving away from that crap, Storm Debbie has been hitting the shores of the UK over the last couple of days in in Ireland as well. Um, It's been crazy. Some of the stuff that I've been seeing online, some of the stories I've been reading as well. Um, There's more warnings come out this morning, guys, for more strong winds and heavy rain over the all across the UK and Ireland. Um, There's a guy I watch on YouTube. Obviously, Lewis and I were in Blackpool last last week or a week week and a half ago, as you know. Um, I watch him. He does all his daily videos of Blackpool, tells you what's going on, what's happening and stuff. And he was down at the... Near the seafront the other day, well, was it yesterday I think it was, and these bunkers were doing it like, but he was showing some stuff, and uh, the storm there is just absolutely fucking insane. That the high winds and the high tides and stuff, it's just been crazy. Uh, there's been an or yellow warning put out for thunderstorms, um, all most across the UK, um, which is just absolutely insane. Winds of up to seventy to eighty miles an hour, um, have been recorded in parts of Wales and also here in Northern Ireland, 
and Ireland as well. Uh, heavy downpours are more expected as well, um, right up until Tuesday night and the Wednesday morning. Um, it's, it's Here in Northern Ireland especially, there's been a lot of road closures over the last few days too, which has just been bonkers, the heavy winds and all, it's been crazy. Um, apparently here in Northern Ireland, um, Northern Ireland Electricity have also come out and said that over 3,000 homes have been cut out with a power, mainly around areas like Craigavon, Newry and Downpatrick around the country areas too as well, which is an absolute nightmare after going through all that last stuff we had a few weeks ago where there was heavy floods across Northern Ireland and the UK, which is crazy. I see in Wales as well, um, there's a yellow weather warning, 77 miles of hour has been the, the fastest winds recorded there in the last couple of days. So guys, all I'm just saying to you is, if you're out and about over the next day or day or so, whatever, please drive safely. Please be careful because this storm, Debbie. Here's the thing. Who comes up with these fucking names for these storms? Like storm this and storm that. They all say it's the people who, who find it. There are all these different names. So like, if I was to walk in tomorrow and go, here, I see a storm coming here from whatever. Oh, we'll call it Storm Matthew. All right, dead on. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Who comes up with these names? I'd love to know. I really, really would. But this one, nice Storm Debbie, with an I, D-E-B-I, the Storm Debbie, uh, is obviously hitting the shores once again of the UK and Ireland. So guys, please, please, please be careful when you're out there driving or, or even traveling in general because it's just pff, mental. The, 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 what do you call it? The, the rain, especially if you live near the sea like we do. So you'll not be seeing me down at the seafront in Bangor here in Northern Ireland with the camera out today doing some vlogging. You'll not be seeing me doing that today, no, because I don't fancy getting blown into the Irish Sea. I don't really fancy that, to be quite honest. End up in Scotland or something like that. Definitely, definitely not. Guys, this is a really good story I was glad to read the other day. Finally, finally after all the lunacy, lunacy, is that how you pronounce that word? Lunacy? Oh, I don't the fuck do I pronounce that? All the craziness, sorry, should we say. I've even had experience with these morons when I was in London last summer. Remember the video I posted on online, guys? I showed you me sitting right beside them. I confronted them. Just oil protesters are now finally getting their, making, they're finally getting the boot up the hole that they need. 110 arrests recently um, as protesters walk up an A41 blocking more traffic in London. And over 100 of them have been arrested and charged. Thank fuck for that. It's about time the government and the police officers lifted these morons and punished them. They are an absolute pain in the ass. They are the most irritating, annoying, obnoxious, rude, pompous, snobby, up their own arse, little, rich, grammar-educated, snooty, snobby wee pricks who walk around blocking our roads because they think they can do whatever the fuck they want. And it's about time I'm glad to see this happening. And apparently there's going to be more arrests if anything else happens as well. The Met Police have finally grew a set of balls and are finally arresting these morons. And they should all be put in front of a judge and prosecuted for it and have given a criminal record. Because if it was me or anybody else, we would be fucking hammered for it, left, right and centre. And I'm glad to see that they haven't just been spoken to or threatened. They have been arrested. So... Here's a wee story that I was reading. I actually saved this the other day for, for today's podcast. It says, Just oiled protesters have brought traffic to a standstill on a busy North London road with police arresting over 100 of them. Thank fuck for that. A large group of demonstrators marched up Hendon Way this morning, causing significant disruptions to passers-by. The Met Police were immediately on the scene. The force have said that all individuals slow marching down the A41 have been arrested. Thank God. There's a video on all of it too as well. 110 arrests in total have been made. They said that their protesters have been arrested for allegedly breaching Section 7 of the Public Order Act 2023, which was brought in in 2023, and I'm glad to see it. And half of them, when, they, when you see them in all these videos on the news or TV or whatever it is you see them on, they all look like they're fucking stoned out of their, out of their tits and they're all on our bloody planet. They're all standing there. Boo. Even the ones I ran into in London. They were, they were like thick as two short planks. And they're being, they're being, uh, all their funding is being paid by by all these lefty fucking guardian readers, snobby, snooty fuckers, giving them money on ju uh, this just given page, whatever it is, to buy all their supplies to go and interrupt things like sporting events and special events, and even going to that was it that Chelsea Garden show? We've seen that there as well. We've seen them going putting uh, that orange stuff all over outside Scotland Yard Police Station in London. 
If that was me, I'd have been spending fucking 10 years in jail. But these morons, because they're wee lefty fucking arseholes, are getting away with it every single week. Finally, now there's a law statement that they can actually arrest them. And I hope the... I hope the hell they're charged for it. I really do. Because after my experience dealing with them, and I, all I was doing was asking them questions. And I asked them, could I record me interviewing them for the podcast to let the listeners hear why they were doing it? And the turnaround says, no, 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 no. Only mainstream media only. That's the words they use to me. So what does that tell you? BBC supporting left-wing morons who are fed a silver spoon up their arse Think they don't have to work. I've I've talked about this in stories for months on this podcast, saying that all they go, oh, but I don't need to work because I'm here fighting the good fight. Why other Joe blogs like me or you, the general listener of this podcast, who are out there slugging their guts out week after week after week, paying their taxes and everything else, for these little fucking do-gooders to walk around blocking roads, like people trying to get to hospitals after heart attacks, giving birth, emergencies, like people involved in car crashes, blah, blah, blah. And because people are getting out of their cars and grabbing these morons and dragging them out of the way and kicking them to the curb, they're the ones in the wrong. Well, now the shoe's on the other foot. And hopefully this story is the start of it, of these fucking morons being kicked out of the way and told, you want to do this? Do you want to play these games? Then you're going to find yourself in jail. Good. I'm glad to see it. I was so glad to see that. And here's hoping that it continues. Because you know something? It's about time that the government and the police grew a set of balls and lifted these morons and locked them up. Because people are getting, the general public, are getting sick and tired of these fools. So it is. But anyway, here's another part of the story I wanted to read out to you as well. Um, That disruption in North London marks the third week of it. The group claims that more, more than 300 arrests have been made now listen to this here, out of 300 people, now I would charge them fucking all, only 132 have been charged and are actually only out of them all. Three have been remanded to, to prison. I'd put them all in fucking prison. I'd lock every one of them up. So I would. I would lock out and teach them a lesson. But then they'll probably think, my mummy and daddy lose such and such with plenty of money and I can get myself a nice barrister and I can get brought out for, and I can get away with the smack in the wrist. Really? Seriously? I would lock them up. Me personally, I would lock them up. So I really, really would. And police are now also um, made a statement as well, saying that they could, they could approximately get up to 40 arrests a day in the UK with these morons. Which is absolutely disgusting. Lock them up. Teach them a lesson. Tell them to go and get a fucking job. Cut their benefits off. Let them go to work. That's what I say. But again, I'm glad to see them finally, finally getting a kick up the arse and arrested. I'm glad to see them. Hopefully this continues. And many TV reporters even said to them, you wouldn't see them doing it in Russia. You wouldn't see them doing it in China. Because they ain't got the balls to do it, that's why. Moving on. Glad to hear that. Now here's another one that's going to get me a rant and rave here. Who is going to be the next James Bond? Now guys, you all know the, new, the last James Bond movie was a huge success. And they killed off Daniel Craig as James Bond. Now, if you haven't saw the last James Bond movie, or if you're not a James Bond fan, you know, even so, go and watch the movie. It's a great movie. And Daniel Craig is no longer the James Bond. Now, obviously, we've had a lot of speculation going around, and we've had a lot of controversy going around who's going to be the next James Bond. They were going to say it was going to be a man of colour. They were going to say it was going to be a woman of colour. It was going to be a woman. It was going to be another guy. (sighs) You'll hear all these different rumours about different genders and whatever else is going to be but when this came up today i went what the fuck a pop star now claims to be an actor uh has now put himself in the race to become the new james bond and when i saw this i was like are you for real this guy if he becomes James Bond, I will never watch another Bond movie as long as I'm breathing on this planet. You would not believe who is now in the running for James Bond. Pop star turned, well he says he's now turned actor, Harry fucking Styles. His name is being discussed in the mix for the new James Bond. Are you for real? I'm sorry. I, 
Where do I start with this? Harry Styles to be the next James Bond. Who comes up with this bullshit? I'll read some of the... There's another article released this morning on it. A new actor has entered the race to replace Daniel Craig as the next James Bond. We've had for a while names the likes of Aaron Taylor Johnson, James Norton, and we also have more people in the, in the mix for this here, obviously, role for the next James Bond movie. <sighs> Listen to this, but now after a, a debunk of a striking new look during a recent public appearance where he spotted a shaved head, uh, there's a new... Uh, I can't even fucking read this. This just makes me fucking cross. I'm a big James Bond fan too when I read this. Apparently now, Harry Styles is now in the running as a surprise outsider to step into Daniel Craig's shoes. Styles is looking to now get into it as he appeared at a recent award show in a tuxedo. And I'm actually looking at the photograph of the tuxedo. And to be quite honest with you guys, if my son dressed like that, I would fucking be, I'd be disappointed in him. Harry Styles is the next James Bond. I'm sorry. No, I'm not being like racist here or disrespectful to anybody or anything at all. James Bond character is your typical... How can I describe him? Ladies' man, typical British... You know, sort of like, it's hard to describe. You know, we look back at all the James Bond characters, they all sort of have that sort of feel to their character, you know, where they're like a, a, a smooth moving operator. You know, he's just one of those like typical British spy agent type characters, like a secret agent type of person, you know, a type of personality. And to bring in some fucking lunatic like Harry Styles to be a fucking James Bond, I'm sorry. Obviously, you're going to get all these wee fucking girls who are going to be screaming, Harry Styles is going to be James Bond. Could you imagine me going to the cinema to watch James Bond? And all these wee fangirls all sitting there, Oh my God, Harry Styles! When you go and watch a fucking James Bond movie, you go and you chill out and you switch off. It's a type of movie. It's a, it's a British classic series of movies. I no disrespect to Harry Styles, but I'm sorry. But if he became the next James Bond, I'll not be fucking watching it. I'm sorry. No. Not a chance. Guys, I'm asking you now here as the listener, what do you think about this? Harry Styles to be the next James Bond. What is going on with this fucking world? I'm sorry. I, I just can't. I can't deal with that. Harry Styles to be the next James Bond. Oh, I'm obviously going to get a lot of people coming in here going, oh my God, you're so horrible. You're being not, not very nice to Harry Styles. Well, I'm just being honest with you. I don't think he, he is the perfect choice. And even people were saying to me, you know, what about a woman being James Bond? James Bond is a male character. But then you get the people coming back and do make some good points as well, saying that 007 isn't specifically a named as a male or a female role. But it's always been a man. Should it be a woman? Which is a fair argument. But in my eyes, James Bond. It's it's what it's called. You know, obviously the name of the movie. But it's James Bond. That's his name, James Bond. You know. But then you get the whole thing. But it's 007 now, and it could be a different. It could be a woman, or it could be this, or it could be that. James Bond's just one of those movies. It's like an action movie. It's a man. Who plays, plays the character, but that's just my opinion on it. And obviously, I'm going to get probably get slated for what I've said, but I don't really give a shit to be quite honest. Um, but Harry Styles for the next James Bond? No, I don't think so. Moving into some politics for you, which I don't really have to talk about, but have a guess who's back in the uh, in politics again after seven years? David Cameron, the ex Prime Minister of the UK, is back. He's back at the cabinet table after seven years. So there you go, he's back in government again. Um, Mr Sunak, that Ari Rovlin rat lookalike, has uh, brought him back into the fold. Um, after Suella Braverman has been sent to the door, shown the door, sorry, she was sacked, um, following her recent criticism of the Metropolitan Police. So I, don't really, I didn't really agree with her much, to be quite honest, but some of the stuff she said about the Metropolitan Police is actually quite true. Not that I really get involved in politics, but Mr. Cameron is now back in Downing Street. 
Yes. Have you not noticed, guys, since COVID started, that there's been that many changes in Downing Street that you really can't keep up with it? I mean, many Prime Ministers have we had. Boris Johnson, then your R woman, and then Rishi Sunak. Then we had all them morons, the likes of fucking, uh, what do you call him? Matt Hancock. He was gone after a while too as well. All these different ones we've had over the last four years. And then there's all people now saying that the, the Tories are not going to win the election again and it's going to be Labour in charge of the country again. Not that I really give a shit, to be quite honest with you, but David Cameron was a bit of a moron as well, to be quite honest. Um, but he's back in office, pretty about there who likes politics. Not that I really am into politics, to be quite honest, but he's back in office again. So I wonder what circus they're going to be running now in the uh, in the UK office. It's going to be interesting over the next few weeks to see what exactly happens, especially with the election coming up very, very soon. So there you go. Anyway, guys, that's some of the stuff that I wanted to talk about today as well. Um, I just can't get over some of them subjects I was talking about like Harry Styles as, as, as James Bond unbelievable but anyway moving on <laughs> let's get into some of your questions because I have been ranting and raving on here for quite, quite a bit actually um, some of your questions here for the Murami podcast today let's get into them let's get them opened and let's see what you have to say to me today Right, I'll get into Instagram first of all today, guys. Um, I put a wee thing up last night on my story asking you for some questions, which some of you have replied to, which is great. Regular listener to the podcast, as always, on the ball, young Ryan McCauley, who always mails me every week. He's actually sent me a very interesting one today, which I want to talk about here. It says, hi, Matthew, it's 41 days to Christmas. Don't even remind me. Uh, for tomorrow's podcast, what is your favourite Christmas song? My God. That's a good question. My favourite Christmas song is Let It Be by Dean Martin. For your 100th episode of the podcast, I think you should do a giveaway or something. Kind regards, Ryan. Favourite Christmas song? Probably Band-Aid. Do They Know It's Christmas Time? That's a, that's a classic. Um, you know, is it Slade? Uh, which it could be Christmas every day. I actually got to personally interview the lead singer of that band. Um... Nobby Holder, a long, long time ago for local radio. Really, really nice guy. Interviewed him a long, long time ago. Um, so it's a really, really nice guy. Um, favorite Christmas song would probably be one of the two of them. It's just a ten in November time I tend to, tend to avoid Christmas songs because it's overplayed now. And, you know, from about maybe the first or second week in December, fine. But, like, the whole way through November, no, thank you, not for me. Uh, definitely not for me. Uh, the 100th episode I do have a big plan for, so stay tuned for that. It is coming very, very, very soon. But Ran, thank you as always for being so loyal to the podcast and obviously the YouTube channel, and thank you for your message. I do appreciate it. Okay, I got one here from Charles. Charles writes to me on Instagram saying, Hi, Matthew. I know by watching your YouTube videos, your daughter turns 18. My daughter turned 18 last year and it broke my heart. My baby girl grew up so quick, I didn't even see the years go by. My son, who is coming 17 this year, isn't too far away from it as well. How does it feel us being two old farts and having children grow up so quick? <laughs> Brilliant. Love the podcast. Keep up the great work. Yes, I would agree with you there. Uh, two old farts. Yes, I do. Even though I had a friend of mine on the weekend saying, Matthew, you're only 42. And I'm saying, yeah, but I feel about 62 sometimes. So yes, it is heartbreaking. Your daughter turning 18. Yes, it is. It really, really is. And you said your son's 17 too as well. Well, Lewis is another couple of years before he gets there. Like, he'll be 15 in March, which is breaking my heart as well. But here, listen. This is what happens when you have babies. They grow up and become adults. So they do. So yeah, it does. It breaks your heart. But anyway, thank you for your messages on Instagram. I do appreciate it, Charles. Let's get into another one here on Instagram. Let's have a look of one here from Ewan, which is E-U-A-N, Ewan. Ewan writes to me on, where's Ewan from? Doesn't say. Uh, Ewan says to me, hey, Matthew, how you doing? I'm currently going through my A-level studies at the moment. I'm really, really struggling. I was wanting to see if you could possibly give my other friend... Paul, a shout out as well, who's also struggling with his A-levels at the moment as well. 
We were trying so hard, but finding it quite difficult. At one point, I felt like dropping out of school and just going and getting myself a job, as I find that these studies are too hard. I am dyslexic myself and really, really struggle. And I listen to your podcast every single week and also watch your YouTube videos. I just wanted to say hi and let's see if you have any advice for my A-level studies this year. Okay, you well, thank you for being so honest with me. Um, yes, my daughter went through those those struggles last year as well, with doing her A levels and whatnot. Um, all I can say to you is, Ewan, is listen, just try, just be yourself. You know, try and um, just just do the best you can, work as hard as you can. You know, and and just try your best. That's all you can do. Um, I know, obviously, you said you have some struggles as well with dyslexia and stuff like that. You know, see, at the end of the day. All you can do is your best. You know, you can try your best. And if, if, if there are certain subjects that you don't pass on this year, you can obviously reset it again. But all I can say to you is, is just, just keep your head up, keep working hard, and just try your best. That's one thing I've always taught my children as well, Ewan, is just I've taught them. As long as you don't slack about and mess about and whatever and just try your hardest to the best of your ability that you've been given, Work your hardest, just keep working hard and things will, will pay dividends in the end. That's all I can really say to you is as well, I've told my kids, just just be yourself, work hard, try try your best. That's all you can do is try your best and don't give up. Just keep trying to the best of your ability and you'll get there. Now you haven't said obviously what, what, you're trying, what your studies are, what you're trying to become whenever you leave school. But all I can say to you is, you know, don't make the same mistakes that I made when I was younger and just literally work your ass off, and they'll get there in the end. Hard work does pay off. So keep me posted how you're getting on. And also a big shout-out to your friend as well. Um, you're saying he was struggling too as well. Tell your friend the same thing I said. Play this message to him and say to him, the both of you is just try your best. Who cares what other people think? If other people in the same year as you're like going, oh, you're not as smart as such and such, but who gives a shit? Be yourself, work hard, and try your best. And at the end of the day, that's all you can really do is try to the best of your ability. So keep me posted how you're getting on. Um, I'd love to hear more from you and let me know how you're getting on. I'd love to hear from you more. So keep working hard and you'll get there. You will. Just just, just keep trying. Like my daughter's going to face at the moment as well, but she's had to go to college and stuff to try and get some of her grades up to become a classroom assistant in the school. So just keep working your hardest. See, my, that's all I say to my children all the time. Just be, be yourself. Try, try your best. That's all you can do. Thank you for your message. And uh, keep me posted on how you're getting on. I'll do one more on Instagram here before I move on, guys, here. Let's see. Right, let's have a look here and see. One here from Ben. Ben is from, let's have a look. Doesn't say on his profile. Ben writes me a message request last night answering the question I put up on my Instagram story. Thank you very much for guys for all your questions, but Ben says, Hi Matthew, can I ask you what your plans are for Christmas this year? Do you have any special plans for this year? Also, can I ask you, is your dad going to be dressing up this Christmas again? I love it when your dad dresses up at Christmas, especially a year or so ago when he turned up in the funny trousers that he looked like Santa Claus was giving him a piggyback. <laughs> I remember those trousers. We actually put them on mum there about two years ago for a laugh too. Uh, love your podcasts. I love watching all your YouTube videos as well. Okay, Ben, no problem. Um, plans for Christmas this year, to be quite honest with you, is not very much. Well, and saying that there, obviously Christmas Day with the kids in the house and stuff. And mum and dad will probably come around in the morning time as usual. And then we'll have our Christmas dinner. And then Brooke will piss off to her boyfriend's house on Christmas night to see him and his family. And then me and Lewis will probably just be sat here on our own. Well, Lewis will probably be upstairs playing his games or away with his wee friend down the street or something like that. And I'll be spending Christmas night on my own this year. As I always do every year now because obviously I don't have a partner anymore. And I'll be spending Christmas on my own this year. That's the plan. Boxing Day. Um, the family are planning to go for a meal. That Lewis and I are not at football. This Boxing Day, we're at football the day after Boxing Day. Big Derby Day in East Belfast. So I'm looking forward to that. The Welders against the Duns. Um... Boxing Day, obviously, be heading it. Mum and Dad and my, t- my brother Tony, his daughter, and my two kids will all be heading it for dinner like we did last year. But to be honest with you, Christmas time for me now is, especially with the kids all being grew up and all now, it's mostly me on my own now. 
Um, I don't really spend much time with anybody over Christmas night because obviously I haven't had a partner for two years nearly now and I'm just sort of on my own. And it sucks, but this is just the cards I've been dealt now, guys, these days now, guys, which is kind of shit. But this is the thing now, whenever you're on your own now and your kids grow up, you just spend Christmas on your own. So you do. So it's just one of those things. But thank you for your question. I do appreciate it. And yes, well, I'll see about Dad, what he's going to dress up as this year. One year he came with like a, tur- a hat with like two turkey legs sticking out of it that moved. Then he had all his wee funny outfits. He always wears on Christmas Day. So yes, no doubt he'll probably have one this year as well. So there you go. Fingers, well, fingers crossed. He didn't dress up last year though. I was pissed at him last year. My dad, you didn't wear your funny outfits this year. Uh, maybe Dad, you're wearing it next year. I don't give a shit. You're wearing your funny outfit next year. If not, I'd fucking dress up as something stupid. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your question. I do appreciate it. Let's get into some of your emails. Podcast at yahoo.com. Where are we here now? Email. My laptop seems to be running pretty slow this morning. There we go. Happy Christmas. <laughs> right, the first email today is from Michael. Where's Michael from? Michael's from Exeter. Ooh, Exeter. Never been to Exeter in my life. Never been there before. But Exeter. There you go, Exeter. Right, Michael writes to me. Hi, Matthew. How you doing? I'm a big football fan like yourself. I'm an Exeter City supporter, but I would also like to watch West Ham. Hmm, it's a bit of a strange combination. I know you're a big, massive Liverpool supporter, but I'd love to see you one time at a West Ham game or an Exeter City game. I know you've had many invitations over the years on the podcast and on the YouTube channel to attend multiple games, but would love to see you at Exeter City's crown one day. I currently sit on the committee of staff that helps out raise funds for the club, and I would love to see you there one day attend the game and see you and Lewis there and make a vlog at our wonderful stadium. Keep up the good work. Love the podcast. And that is from Michael and Exeter. Well, there you are. Thank you very much for the invitation. I appreciate it. Exeter, how would I actually get to Exeter from, from Northern Ireland? Probably have to fly to a certain location and then maybe get a train. So I would, no idea. Um, but yeah, God, do you know something? That actually, Exeter reminds me of a football, I, I actually done a wee, was it a couple of years ago, I, I played a few games online on FIFA, about three or four years ago with Exeter City against Tony online and I was beating him with all these big teams and he was cracking up. It was Exeter, Luton Town, and there was another team as well I was using, Ali Ali. I think I've probably pronounced it from this, the Saudi League or whatever it's from. I think it's Ali, A-L-I-L-L-I, and he hated it so much. He was like, why are you playing these crap teams? You're beating me, they're frustrating to beat. And I'm going, yeah, that's the whole point. But yes, thank you for the invitation to Exeter. I wouldn't mind going there sometime to uh, see the stadium and obviously experience it. Because guys, I, I, you all know, if you watch my vlogs, I love going to new football stadiums. I'm a big football man, as you all know, but... Yeah, and you're a West Ham supporter too, my friend Adam from the uh, ASAP podcast or ASAP podcast. Uh, he's a big West Ham fan. He was actually over at the Europa League game there last week. Uh, big shout out to Adam and obviously Sean from the ASAP ASAP podcast or ASAP podcast. It actually stands for Ah Shit, another podcast. Or Ah Shit, sorry, he's saying Northern Ireland. Another podcast. Go and check them out on Spotify and, and Apple Music and whatnot. They're. Quite an interesting bunch who they are, especially when you're having a few beers with them. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. Many, many thanks. Right, let's go into another one here. Let's have a look here and see. Right. One from Wayne. Wayne doesn't write where he's from here, but Wayne writes to me. Hi, Matthew. I've heard you speaking about on your YouTube channel and your podcast that you've always wanted to go to Greece. Now, I remember you saying on one of your vlogs a few years ago on the airplane when you were with Sandra and Lewis that your plan was to go to Greece with Sandra. But I now know you are no longer together. Would you still go to Greece in the future for a holiday, even though that you're not with her anymore? Well, there you go. That's a straight-to-the-point question. <laughs> Very tough question to answer. Um, but yes, um, answer your question. I will certainly answer your question. No problem at all. You know me. I answer any type of question. Uh, yes, my plan was to go to Greece Um at the time, yes, we wanted to go to that San, is it San Dorini or San Dorini or whatever it's called. Beautiful part of Greece. Would I ever go nigh on my own? Mm, tough question. I would love to go eventually one day, but obviously it's going to take a wee while before I get the, the, the obviously the, 
what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of the word I'm looking for to, to even get the, the courage up even to go now because again, it was a plan with, for me and her to go. Um, but you all know we're obviously not together anymore, which obviously is an unfortunate thing, but sure, that's the way life, that's the way life goes. Um, but no, yeah, I mean, it's, it's on the bucket list to, to visit because it's a beautiful part of all a few boys have been there with their wives and they said it's an amazing spot. The, the, the views are incredible. The weather is beautiful. The people are amazing. The whole place of, of the area is amazing. And I would love to visit it someday. So yes, to answer your question, probably yes, eventually one day I would love to go, but not just yet. Maybe on down the road. But again, yes, thank you for pointing that out to me because I actually forgot all about Sandorini, actually. It's a beautiful part of the world. I've watched loads of videos of people being there on YouTube and stuff and some of the pictures and stuff just looks absolutely beautiful. So it does. So there you go. But thank you for your question. I do appreciate it. Let's get into one more question on the emails before I go on to the Facebook page. Right. I have one here. Let's have a look here and see. Da, 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 da. Right. I have one here from Robert. And Robert has not wrote down where he's from. Guys, please write down on these emails where you're from. I would love to hear where you are from. I'd love to hear from different parts of um, wherever you're, you're listening to us here on the world. I would love to hear your uh, your views on this. Um, but anyway, yes, let's go here. Robert says to me, what's your thoughts on the whole Meghan and Harry situation about not being there for Charles's birthday? I know you talked about it on the podcast, but I just wanted to hear your honest opinion on it. As he turns 75 this week. Okay. Um, I've talked about it before. I think it's the whole Harry and Meghan situation. It's bullshit. I've mentioned it many, many times. He should be there for his dad's birthday. Um, I think he turns 75 today, I think, from what I remember. He's 75 today. Um, I think. I don't remember the dates. Uh, but yes, I think it's nonsense. And he should be there. And he should be there for Christmas as well. But obviously he's got a drama queen of a wife. But we'll say no more about that. Thank you for your question. Right, let's get into some of the Facebook messages. Uh, the Facebook messages on the Moor Army YouTube channel Facebook page before we head down the road for another day. Right, where are we here? Let's see. Du, 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 du. I've one here from Helen. Helen on Facebook writes to me saying, "Hi Matthew, I know you're involved in football for a long time, as you talk about it regularly on your podcast and your YouTube channel." I'll just knock something off my table here when I'm talking, answering the question. <laughs> um, she says, would you ever get involved in television on a proper TV apart from being online? Would you ever be a TV presenter or a TV reporter in the future? Okay. Um, to be quite honest with you, but depend who I was working for. You know, I'd never work for the BBC. I wouldn't care how much you paid me. I wouldn't work for them. Um... You know, whatever work for like a, a another TV channel in the UK, possibly if it was offered a, a post to do it, yes, probably depending. But to be involved in all that sort of journalism and stuff like that, it's 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 a hard game to get into, and it's a hard game to you know get your foot in the door. Hi, I got my foot my door in, in in Northern Ireland here in football and stuff like that was obviously you know going to a local club in Austin could have started there and. I've talked about this before many times. I'm obviously grateful to Bangor Football Club for giving me my opportunity to start with. I'm always eternally grateful for it. But you obviously have to get you have to work hard and get your name out there. I mean, it's took me 13 years to get where I am now. I mean, a lot of people say to me all the time, you know, why aren't you working in the Premier League? Why aren't you working for a bigger club? Why aren't you working for this and that there? And, you know, it's a long story. We even spoke about that on Sunday night to a friend of mine. But... Um, no, it's it's one of those situations where you know it depends what who it was for and where it was for and, and things like that. So, but don't get me wrong, I wouldn't, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't say no, um, but I definitely wouldn't work for BBC. Never in a million years, but never work for the BBC. I'm sorry, but I don't care anybody says I'll never work for the BBC. Even if they offered me a job as a cameraman or a reporter or anything to do with the BBC, I wouldn't work for them. And I don't care. I'm not probably going to get slated for this again. I don't really give a shit. You know me, guys. I don't care. But I would definitely not work for them. But yes, depending on the circumstances and whatever else, yes, certainly. Um, but thank you for your question. Helen, I do appreciate it. And, you know, maybe one day. You don't know. Just have to wait and see. I'll do one more and then I'll head down the road. Any more questions, guys, throughout the day, I'm going to get a chance tonight. Well, if I ever get a chance tonight, because I'm actually hopefully getting up to the football ground tonight to do some interviews after last week's chaos of the football. Um... Yes, so I'll try and respond to more of your questions personally. 
as I always do. Um, some, of your, some of your responses last week was brilliant, <laughs> especially on Instagram. Thank you for replying to me, Matthew. It means so lot. Guys, I'm just me. I just love replying to all my listeners. Moving on to one last question before I go. Right, Carl writes to me on Facebook. Hello, Carl. How you doing? Let's click on your profile and see where you're from. She says, from Morecambe in the UK. Carl from Morecambe in the UK. Hello, Carl. How are you today? Hope you are keeping well. I hope your family and all is keeping well. Hi, Matthew. Hi, are you? I hope you're doing well and I hope your family's doing well. If I don't get a chance to speak to you, happy birthday to your, your daughter, Brooke, coming up on her 18th birthday. She's such a sweet girl and I love watching her growing up over the last couple of years on your YouTube channel. Well, thank you for that. Question, what is your favourite radio station to listen to and also your favourite news channel and also your favourite TV show? Well, I've told you about my favourite TV shows are, obviously, before on the on the, on the the podcast. Uh, favourite radio station has to be local radio station here in Northern Ireland, which I fucking torture every week on Thursday nights with Tony with text messages. U105 here in Northern Ireland. Uh I also like listening to local stations in Liverpool too as well. Um, but U105 here in Northern Ireland, um, which are part of the UTV franchise, which, again, uh, every Thursday night whenever I'm having a few beers with Tony, I always text them in and have a laugh and a bit of banter with them and all and text them in and say, you know, Tony and I are having a wee drink, whatever it is, and having a laugh, maybe having a bit of fun, a bit of crack and laugh, not or I've got to know some of the presenters and stuff, and they're all nice, nice people. So apart from the old one or two, you're a bit boring, like. But we'll say no more about that. But anyway, uh, yes, that would be it. And my favourite news station, gee whiz, will it be in the UK now? Because if it was to be outside the UK, here anywhere we're in the world, and there's obviously a few different ones, but if it had to be specifically in the UK, hmm, probably be GB News because Sky News and BBC are very sort of one sided. And GB News are sort of like, you know, straight to the point, call a spade a spade, call out bullshit from a mile away. And that's pretty much it. So I've probably been mistaken. I'm saying want to probably get criticism again, saying, why are you watching that station before you should be watching Sky News or BBC? No. But thank you for your question. And yes, yes, Burke is 18. I know. Keep reminding me, always keep reminding me. We need to see the vlog for our birthday, guys. I've been working on a video for the last couple of weeks of her 18th birthday. And I'm going to actually play it to her and get her response to it. Obviously, you guys will see it on the screen, but whenever it ends, it comes back to her responding to it. We do see her reaction. Guys, I've had to stop making this video a couple of times because it's got quite emotional for me. Just wait and see. It's, go it's going to be a cracker, trust me. Guys, thank you for all your questions. I do appreciate it. I will get to the rest of your questions throughout the day. Um responding to some of you as much as I can. Um, if you want to get back to me on, on future episodes of the podcast, you can certainly do it by Murami Podcast at yahoo.com. All the social media feeds, official Matthew Murami on Instagram, the Murami YouTube channel, Facebook page, and also you can go onto the Murami website as well. Um, stay, and, and just remember there as well, there was a subject in the podcast that I never got a chance to speak about, and that was Harry and his dad. They were saying apparently Harry's only going to give his dad a phone call for his birthday instead of being there. That's what I was going to talk about, but I forgot actually all about that. Just checked in my notes here. I do apologise about that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm back on Thursday for a, another episode of the podcast, guys. Uh, yes, so stay tuned for that. I am going to be posting tomorrow morning, guys, or tomorrow at some point, the announcement for the, the big announcements I've been telling you about in relation to the podcast, in relation to the um, YouTube channel and all the other things as well going on. So stay tuned for that. It's being posted tomorrow. Also later on today, we're dropping the Christmas merchandise. Murami.co.uk for all your Christmas merch, your jumpers, your, your hoodies and all your stuff to keep you nice and toasty and warm during the winter. Stay tuned for that and more. So it's going to be an interesting few days for the Moor Army. And guys, we're back on Thursday with the Jackass of the Week as well. So please let me know who you think the Jackass of the Week should be and more. So please stay tuned. And once again, if you're listening to us here on Apple Music, Spotify, add us to your favourites or even on TuneIn Radio. Hello, all my listeners on TuneIn Radio. Also, if you're listening to me on YouTube, drop a like on this YouTube video. Hit subscribe below. would appreciate it as well. I think that's everything. As far as I know, it is. 
Yeah. I'm going to go, guys, because it looks like the sun's about to creep out through the clouds. It's going to be a very good day, hopefully. Also, yes, guys, stay tuned for the vlogs. They're going to be dropping too as well. I've got a couple more dropping where Brooklyn Lewis go to the dentist. Mum and dad are getting a brand new kitchen put in. Yes, I'll ask them heading around this afternoon to see how their new kitchen's going. Stay tuned for that as well. Loads of great content coming out in the channel over the next couple of days too as well. So I've got myself quite busy over the next 48 to 72 hours. It's going to be fun. I will see you back here on Tuesday, guys, for another episode of the Murami Podcast. Enjoy your Tuesday and Wednesday. And I will see you back here on Thursday for another exciting episode whoop, whoop, <laughs> of the Murami Podcast. So until Thursday, guys, I will see you all then. Thanks for listening.